Muhammad Ali versus Ike Bayabuchi. Going out to a Dari pennant. Let's get into it. Ike Bayabuchi was just a great all around fighter. He could throw every punch from the jab, uppercuts, hooks, straight rights. He was a great counter puncher, excellent hand speed, and great body work. Ike Bayabuchi was just a complete fighter and very exciting to watch. I wish we could have seen more of him. I really don't see any weaknesses on Ike Bayabuchi's part. But if I was just to nitpick at something, maybe he doesn't have the footwork to deal with Ali in his prime. The great Muhammad Ali needs no introduction. He had the best footwork in the history of boxing as far as I'm concerned. And Muhammad Ali could throw every punch as well, and then some. From jabs, hooks, uppercuts, straight rights, and the fastest hands in the history of boxing, from what I could tell. Muhammad Ali was just great, and he was called the greatest for a reason. Muhammad Ali would have to be at his best and in his prime to compete with Ike Bayabuchi. Ali would have to use his footwork, his speed advantage, and Ali would definitely have to box. He wouldn't be able to lean against the ropes and take punishment, and he wouldn't be able to sit on the inside and compete with Ike. Bayabuchi was just too good of a counter puncher. He hit too hard, and he was too accurate with his shots. The thing they have in common is that they both were just great. Of course, I wish we would have gotten to see more of Ike um, he left a lot to be desired, but I can only imagine how far Ike would have went. And once again, Ali needs no introduction. With both of these guys fighting each other at their absolute best. I mean, this fight is up there with Frazier versus Ali, Foreman versus Ali, Shavers versus Ali. I mean, this is one of those high caliber fights for Ike Bayabuchi was truly amazing. And just imagine if he would have fought a few more years, what he could have become. I mean, he, he was impressive. He really was. But for this particular fight, I'm going to go with the prime Muhammad Ali because he's more proven. Um, he has a longer resume. He's more seasoned. And we know what he can do. So prime Muhammad Ali by a close decision. Very close decision. Please give me your thoughts. Don King is definitely a controversial figure. He had his faults. But one thing we have to give to Don King. Don King made the fights we wanted to see. If Don King was still on top today, if he was still running things today, we would have been on Spence versus Crawford three. So whatever was going on between him and his fighters, and I don't like to see anyone being taken advantage of, and everyone deserves what's fair, especially fighters. You're in there taking the punishment, you're taking the risk, you're risking your lives to entertain us, and you deserve everything that's coming to you or, or should be coming to you. And so when I think about Don King, Don King is a double-edged sword. From what I've heard, he wasn't necessarily the best for the fighters. But on the other hand, he was best for the fans. You never had to wonder when the best would fight each other. When Don King was running things, it was a regular occurrence. It really was. Now, I don't know what was going on behind closed doors. I try to stay as far away from boxing politics as I possibly can. 
and just focus on the fights and the fighters. But Don King put on events. Don King knew how to promote a fight. Don King, it just seems like he knew what he was doing. And to tell you the truth, I don't know what these promoters today are doing. I don't know why they, they can't make the best fights. I'm not particularly concerned with the particulars. But at the end of the day, they just have to find a way to make the fights that the fans want to see. And they just have to make it happen. That That's your job as a promoter. And so, And it just seemed like Don King was mindful of the fans. He knew or sensitive to the fact that the fans wanted to see certain fights and he provided those fights. Was he doing some shady stuff? Maybe, I don't know, more than likely. But at the same time, it's not my business. I'm speaking as a fan right now. And Don King put on the events I mean it's hard to love boxing and hate Don King because most of the fights we consider historical fights legendary fights or notable fights Don King had his hand in it so I'm not necessarily here to praise him but you gotta keep it real at the same time when Don King was on top fights were happening fighters were active and I'm sensitive to the fact that the fighters were were taking damage you know fighting multiple times that, that's why it's a catch-22 but the fact remains the fact remains that Don King was making fights happen that that boxing was more in the mainstream when Don King was on top Yes. And so Don King was definitely the fans promoter. He was the fans promoter. And and growing up in that era, watching boxing in that era, I must admit that I got spoiled. We got spoiled. Because it was just a given that Holyfield was going to fight up to three, four times a year. And that he was going to fight other top fighters. You know, you can even go back to the 80s. You knew that the Fabulous Four was going to fight each other. And so the top fighters fighting one another, it was just a given back then. I never would have imagined a day like this to where we're sitting around begging for fights to happen. You didn't do that when Don King was running things. Love him or hate him. Just give the man that. Just give him that. Love him or hate him. You never had to look for a fighter, wonder where they were, wonder why they were, they were so inactive. And this Crawford Spence situation, it would have been handled. It would have been handled. The fight would have happened two, three years ago. And as I said earlier in this video, we would have been on Crawford Spence 3 right now. And so whatever the politics or the particulars in the background, you know, I really don't care because it's their job to make the fights that we want and to make them happen. And I have the sense that the promoters today don't know what they're doing or either they just don't care. I don't know. They're getting paid. Forget the fans. You know, that's the sense that I'm getting from these promoters today. It's all about camps. It's all about, it's not necessarily being a fan of a particular fighter or fighters. Now we're fans of promotional companies, which there is nothing wrong with to a certain extent. But the tribalism is killing boxing. The fanboy, fangirl behavior is really hurting the sport. And if we as the fans would change our behavior, if we would change our habits, 
if we would consider the sport as a whole versus just one fighter, one camp, one promotional company. And, and I'll be honest, if I like a fighter, I like a fighter, regardless of what promotional company they're with, who their trainer is. I'm just a fan of the fighter. But that's not so with a lot of fans today. It's all about which promotional company they're with, tribalism. But when Don King was running things, you know, he pretty much had the market cornered. He knew what he was doing. Don King, for all of his ways that you may not like, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of pushback on this video. But for all of his ways, the guy knew what he was doing and he delivered. Now, whatever issues him and the fighters had, and I hate to say it like this, but at the end of the day, that's their business or that was their business to work out. And I don't want to see anyone taken advantage of or hurt. But at the same time, we have to know our place as fans. And we just have to make sure they're delivering on these fights. I could go on and on, but I'll quit right there. Please let me know what you think. If you like the channel, please share, promote, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it.